And you know, I've been doing practice, which I have to learn, is to see what kind of period ends today. I don't have to do that. And now I've been saying, now I'm 14. She had a lot to go. It's behind her. I was surprised when I saw you. Okay, my friends, may I have your attention? Everyone. Guys, I have given you a handout today, and these handouts, which I prepared out for you, contain the lower materials that we need for. I have given the topic that what we are going to cover for the next couple of sessions, which is going to be called Numinal Equations. I collected some more materials from both the Nelson textbook, from the Macro textbook, and from the Hexa ID textbook. Then all the things that we need for the next coming sessions, next two sessions, is all included there, and also the exercises, which I'm going to also solve it myself, and put it inside as you say the Google Hash. But before we start, I just wanted to grab your attention. And I thought, okay, what can I do to grab all your attention? I came across this picture, and I put it there, and I said, oh, that's a good thing. They should be curious. I hope I can see some curiosity in your face. Otherwise, it's tough. Yes, this is That's right. It's going to be a kind of a new breath for after I, I have, we had, I should say, we had our first summer to test. This page of the second part of the book is going to be more fun. And anybody can tell me what do you see in this picture? Bridge. Bridge. What kind of a bridge? Stanford bridge. Huh? Stanford bridge. Stanford bridge. A suspension bridge. Suspension bridge. That's right. And look at this. You see the suspension bridge on the first page. This is the longest pedestrian suspension bridge in North Portugal. Look at this. The thing that we are going to cover for the next couple of sessions somehow relates to this application that, for example, you have a suspension, for example, bridge. You can define it and you can model it, I should say, Alexandra, by, let's say, for example, the polynomial, then let's say, okay, find, for example, the points that the stress on that bridge is going to be, for example, zero. Then it makes that, it makes that the bridge to be safe. Now, before we move on, I hope that now you are very curious about the lessons for today. All right, Madina, you like to just go to North Portugal, try that suspension bridge? I like to go to North Portugal to try that suspension bridge. Yeah, we have to have a class tour there. Guys, uh, before we start, and yet, uh, Ash, please, please, let's, as I said, that, this picture is being recorded. I'm just going to post it on the Google Classroom. Hopefully, the sound quality is going to be good. That you can also hear me so far. Now, before we start, I just wanted to do something that uh, I think maybe I have to change your two spots there. Uh, maybe next time I have to ask Ash. Not because we talk, because I think I can have a very good to see you both there. Because from where I stand here, I cannot see you both very well. But that's the reason probably you have to have to change your seat. Maybe that's not in here. Okay, then if I ask, don't take it personal. You think that, okay, I just want to see you both there. Okay, now. The thing that uh, we covered so far in the previous classes was that we said that Alexander, we, if you just go to the next page, uh, it's going to be page two, I have the things that we learned, the summary of the things that we learned from the previous session. We said that in our previous discussion, that we said that if we have, for example, a polynomial, and we have a binomial, for example, like this, we can use the remainder theorem to say that, for example, the remainder is going to be a function numerically evaluated at minus b over a, and if this is going to be zero, it means that the quotient that we get from here, it's going to be a factor of the polynomial that we have right here. And that was the thing that we spent many, many sessions on this. And now we are just going to use the concept of the factors of the polynomial 
which we also recovered that in the, the, the previous session. We said that if you have a polynomial, then what you do, you just uh, arrange it in a way that, for example, you have uh, the leading term and the leading coefficient. If the leading coefficient is one, it's one scenario, Michelle, and if the leading coefficient is not one, Jackson is a different scenario. Now, if you please just go to the very short question, which is here, that's a multiple choice question. Try to see if you can do this. If you can do this, you do that, you bring one up. Then you can just move on. Let's just take it. Okay. Uh, honestly, I myself, I'm very scared of it. I, I, if I just go on top of this uh, desk, I look down and feel panicked. I'm afraid of it. Okay, now, look at this. The polynomial is x to the power 4 minus 5x squared plus 12x plus 16. And it's going to be divided by x plus 3. How much is the remainder? Anybody got that? Let's see. As what we discussed here, we just substitute minus 3 on this polynomial up there, and you have minus 3. You see, you start from the left. Whenever you see x, you plug it up, just put minus 3. Minus 3 to the power 4, minus 5, minus 3 to the power 2, plus 12, times minus 3, plus 16. How much did you get? 88. Now, Look at this one. Now that you see that, you just use the remainder theorem, and that's the thing that we are just going to use it for the rest of the class. Now, any question? This is kind of a review. Just form of your brain. Everyone has a calculator, by the way, today? Anybody? Everyone has a calculator? I think that's going to be now. Now, Oh, yeah, I can't even make one. What is that? I just, uh, did it in the calculator. I can show you. Look. Are you talking about different numbers? Putting that myself. Guys, how much is 2 to the power of 4? 81. 81? Okay, I have it. How much is 2 to the power of 4? Never mind, it's not. How much is 2 to the power of 2? Nine times five. Yeah. Forty-five. <laughs> and now minus thirty-six, and we have sixteen. How much do you get? Sixteen minus thirty-six plus 30, forty-seven. How much do you get? Forty-five. It becomes eighty-three. Am I right? It's forty-five. This one. Forty-five. Forty-five. Put it on 36, it becomes 81. 81. Oh, 16. Who said 88? Yeah, this is 88. This is 16. Yeah. Now, thanks for not including the others. Now, guys, now we're just going to start the lesson very seriously right now. Just please go to the page number three. And now, the thing that we just want to use. Is that we are just gonna in, just motivate ourselves to just solve some equations. But before that, we have to do some practices on the factors. Look at this. I have a polynomial, for example. The polynomial which I have is as this is on that page. This is x to the power two minus five x to the power two minus two x plus twenty four. Okay, now what we are going to do right now. It's just going to be um, essentially from now on. We are just going to work simply with the polynomial is that the memory is greater than 2. It starts from 3 all the way to 4, 5, 6, and all the way up. 
Now, now you just want to find a kind of a method how to factor these terms when they have, for example, the leading term of this polynomial is of 33. We are going to talk in two different methods. We are just going to find uh, one easy way. If you just hear it in two minutes, we are just going to learn the easy way. Now we are just going to learn also the way which requires lots of lots of computations. Now, in order to factor this, the question is that you ask yourself, why do I have to bother myself to factor a polynomial? What is the purpose? Am I insane? I can do much more interesting stuff. I can, for example, just get outside and um, have a walk. Why do I have to factor a polynomial like that? Before I tell you what's the reason for it, just please look at this one. And this is going to be a whole, I should say, roadmap. What is going to be done until the next session? Look at this. Now, if you have, the, for example, you have a couple of functions. You have a product of them. You say that d of x, for example, times h of x, times, for example, z of x. You see that when you have a couple of functions, they are multiplied into each other as a product. Sometimes you just want to say that, okay, I'm just going to see at one point, they are just going to just, for example, cross. Uh, the x intercepts. Why? For example, by proportion, I'm, I'm a mathematical neuroscientist, so I look at this one. I rarely use the physical finance, but imagine that. You have some investments, you have so much. Who likes to get rich? No one? Ash, yes, people like to get rich. For example, you have some money, you invest it with, let's say, for example, RBC. For example, you have for example, what you do this in the mathematical modeling. For example, you have some money. You just invest in the stock market, Alexander. And you see that, for example, I think this is your f of x. There are some points, and you see that the value of x is going to be, let's say, your, uh, for example, your investment. I call that I of t, the investment over the time. And you see that at some points, you are just going to get really poor. All the money that you have is just going to go to the zero. And it means that you didn't invest your stock in the right spot. Then now you become interested to find what are those times of the year, Alexandra and Michelle. And you ask yourself, what kind of the year is that? That I'm just going to be bankrupt. Because you can see that if the F of X crosses the time axis, it means that your income invested in the bank is going to be exactly zero. And you don't want that happen. Now you come to ask yourself, you just go to your financial advisor, in one of those smooth physical rooms in, let's say, Scotia Bank. You say, okay, tell me what are those times of the year that I'm going to get bankrupt? Then before that, you can just withdraw your money. And these are the things in practice that you want to always know what times. In what, for example, in space, where you stay, what time in the, for example, time, your function is going to be exactly zero. For example, it was one example. You can find many examples in real practice, but it was one example. Now, then the question for ourselves to ask is that if, for example, the same investment in RBC is modeled like this, G of X, H of X, G of X, three different functions multiply to each other in the action, then we come ourselves to ask to predict these times. What do we have to do? We say, okay, because I know that over this long time, I'm just going to get, for example, my income ratio to be zero, then if this is, let's say, if I call that I of x, which is like f of x, then I say that if I can solve this problem, I of x becomes zero, I can find those terms. Then as a result, then you come to get this one. You say that g of x, h of x, z of x has to become zero. Now, if the investment functions that the bank offers you is in the factorized format, Jackson, 
Then when you just want to find a way that to find the times that you are just going to get bankrupt, then it becomes very easy to find it. Because you see that the product of three functions are zero, then you ask yourself, okay, in order to satisfy this equation, each individual term has to become zero. Then you do not have to just solve a huge chunk of the function. You take it in small pieces. For example, whose birthday is the coming very soon? Whose birthday is coming very soon? For example, imagine my birthday is, for example, tomorrow. I mean October, but anyhow, imagine this is tomorrow. You bring a huge cake for me. I cannot just take it. I have to slice it, chop it in small pieces before having it. Now it's like that. You cannot have the whole chunk of the cake. You have to break it into small pieces. Then as a result, you say that in order to find the times, then for example, once g of x should be zero, at the same time, h of x should be zero, and at the same time, z of x should be zero. Now, life is much easier. Instead of solving the huge function, you are solving small pieces. Now, I need the lessons that we are just going to cover today until the next session is revolving around this philosophy. And actually, this philosophy, that if you ask Laura, for example, Laura, what's the philosophy of the lesson for today is that? I say that I'm just going to give you a huge piece of cake like I of x, now you are just going to chop it into small pieces that eat it. And that's what you are going to do. So it's a huge function called the nominal of delta, for example, 20 Liana. Then resolve it into this format, factorized format, then solve piece by piece the equation. Now that's going to be a philosophy lesson. And if that's going to be a philosophy, and that's the thing which we just want to follow for the next two sessions, is that I have this huge, for example, piece of data, or the investment functions from the RBC Ash, and I want you to just convert it into small pieces. That now we can just solve these equations. And that's the purpose that we are just going to do. Any questions so far? Everyone is happy to know what's going to happen? Yeah. Yes? No. Now we just want to come over here and put that into a factorized format. That small piece of the functions become, I should say, uh, uh, a kind of factorized function. Now, what do you recommend to do? Spend maybe 10 seconds to think. What is your philosophy? For example, Russell, what do you think? Tell Rihanna. What do you think that what this strategy has to do with Yana? Russell wants to tell you something for it all. Do you have any plans to start this? No. Silly you. Now, guys, now, I'm going to tell Yana, do you have anything as a plan to tell to Russell? About, oh, about what? About how to factorize this in small pieces, pieces by pieces by pieces, to chop it into small pieces. That's up. We don't want to talk to you. Okay. You have anything to answer? No worries. Crap. I'm going to advise you now. Guys, look at this. One of the first things that you do, and normally you just use your calculators to do that, is that. I'm just going to come back. Now, that's the reason we started by this. I'm just going to come back to the things which I learned before and try to find a quotient in the long division strategy that we have to show that its remainder becomes zero. Then, if that happens, I say that then the P of X, which is my huge K, then is a product of QX time is binomial. Now, then the strategy of this look at the board. Priyasha and Russell. And now, I, I, I think you got the answer. Now you just want to share that, Russell? No? Okay. Look at this. Then the strategy is this to find AX plus B. Then if I find this, 
if I use this one, they will let me make this part because that part is a little bit that keeps saying, where's my reason? Okay, let me bring this part. And alter this. Now, the thing that we just want to do is this thing. For this, we'll just come over here. Find as what we have done before. Find Ash is binomial, and then Jackson is going to tell you, okay, when I have this binomial, I get the quotient, then the huge piece of cake is reduced to the product of this times this. Now, that's going to happen. That's the strategy. And Lauren, can you tell me if I have this binomial, how can I find? The first factor of this. Um, by what? That's so true. Lauren says that if I do want to find the factor of this polynomial of the tree, I kind of say, oh, these terms look a little bit scary to me. I just ignore them. I focus Ash then on the constant in 24. Then I'm looking for the factors for the whole tree of x. Um, then I said, okay, I'm just going to find the factors of the constant term first because I'm scared of them, I ignore them. Then 24 is going to be the constant term, as the moment said, to find this factor. The factor is plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2. And Alexander, what else can you tell me? Twenty-four. Um, six. Okay. Um, four. Let's start with the four. Yeah. Six. Um, twelve. Before let's start. Eight. Oh, eight. And twenty-four. I think I missed this one. Here. Plus or minus two. Am I right? This is all the factors that we need for 24? Yes? And now, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, oh, now we are good. Everyone is okay with the factors which I got? Yes? Now, guys, that's going to be a fun part which I like it. You know what's that part? Look at this. Things are not a bit very interesting. I have P of X. I looked at all the factors which I got. For example, plus one. I put plus A P of plus one becomes how much? Or the factors can be plus two. And the polynomial at two is going to be how much? If they become zero, then for example, X minus one is a factor. Guys, I'm not, I'm just gonna ask you to do this, but the problem is that. But you see what the trouble which you had to find out in variable value here, I said 8, 8, and it turned out to be 16. We do not want to make the errors. Then Daniel, you better talk to one who not use your calculator. That's a good idea. That's going to be a good idea. And because of Daniel's amazing to use. And Kate, how about you? You can be that's a good idea. No? <laughs> you don't have a calculator? Don't worry. People should get Guys, guys, please have a listen. If you do not know how to use a calculator, how much time do you have? Hmm. 10, 24, you're going to be done by 12, huh? Yes? No. What time you finished? Oh, oh, yes. Okay, look at this. If you do not know how to use your calculator, I'm just going to catch up. Who doesn't have a calculator? Make sure my work is real quick. Yes, I'm going to tell everyone, then I come back to you individually. We have to do this, yes. Yes, you don't have a good Oh, okay. Then. Uh, just let me put you in the calculator. Oh, we are. Oh, 
Guys, look at this. If we just wanted to use the numerical value, I hope that you know how to use this. You put it into the y, then if you just want to just find it, for example, you can just uh, use the second and press move. Then it takes you to the main menu to find, for example, your function. And also you can just press alpha and trace. It gives you the option to choose the functions that you have. Then press enter. Then find, for example, y1, parenthesis, for example, is valued at 2. Close the parenthesis, press enter. You get, for example, the number. Yes. Yes. First of all, everyone can also get some new reviews. Okay, let's let's read it. I'm going to do this from the beginning. Guys, please, everyone. Yes, you have a calculator. I do some of on this angle, I can't see you very far. Oh, that's so hard. Maybe I have to learn to just see the weather. If I ask you, don't worry because I want to see the weather. Oh, okay. Okay, nice. Look at this. This is why. Just open, just turn your, um, oh, fantastic. Turn your calculator on, Michelle. Then press the button Y at the very top left. Then enter the function, Alexander. What is the function is this? And I hope that you don't want to enter the function there, huh? Everyone is saying, right? Yes, the other one. Okay. Uh, uh, Yes, I can make it to you. Guys, please everyone listen. Oh my god. It's too much. No. Guys, I'll accept. Michelle, look at this. Enter the function. Then when you enter the function, what's going to happen next? You have to put every individual number inside the function. Then in order to do that, press second, the blue one. Press second. Then press low. Yeah. Really? Yeah. When you just press the second and mode, it quits and you do not see anything. You do not yeah, see your function. That. Oh, that's good. Then now, from there, you are you're doing it. Press alpha, then press trace. No, no, just do this one, please. After second and mode, press green, press alpha, and trace. <laughs> You see, did you do that, Michelle? Yeah. You see a list of functions, y1, y2, all the way to the y0? If you have each of the first function, please press enter. Ooh. Now you see y1. Oh. Isn't it correct? Oh. Then open the parentheses. Enter, for example, one of these numbers, 4. Then close the parentheses. Right, Michelle? You have so far so good? Then Jackson press enter. Voila, you have it. Okay. Okay. Oh, you have to see it. Oh, you have it? Oh, you have it? Oh, you have it? Yes. Alpha? No, no. Second and third so no. Alpha? And then second. Mode. Enter. You have only one function. Just put any number in there. Fantastic. Oh, there you go. Now, guys, please do this quick activity. Anthony, Laura, and Medina. Do you have a calculator? No. No worries. Oh, 
Yes. So. Say Russell, do not worry. You put x minus minus two x plus two, and Russell put this one here and ask you your binomial. Yes, Lauren. Yes, ma'am. Then you have x cubed minus five x squared minus two x plus twenty four. Okay. Now. Now, when we just find the first factor, we just start Alexandra to find the quotient. Now, what we are going to find here is going to be very, very, very important. It is as important as you just want to have your coffee with a muffin. Huh? Now, for this one, x cubed, what should I multiply this one to get that? X squared, right? <coughs> Let me make it a little bit more colorful. I have x squared, then I get x cubed oh. not plus two times x. Oh. I close this down. This is a square ball. Oh yes, two x is one. Thank you. Now, as Jackson said, this can be this can be vanished. I have minus two x squared minus five x squared. How much do I get? Minus seven x squared. Then I bring the rest to x plus twenty five. What is the next term which I can multiply to this to get this one? Minus seven x. And how much should I get Jackson? Minus seven minus x squared. Minus four two x. I close it. I flip the signs. Then these two terms are going to vanish, Rihanna. Then I have plus 14 x Jackson minus 2 x. How much do I get? 12 x plus 24, huh? Then I'm done. If I just Alexander put plus 12, then I get the remainder 0, which I like. Yes, Calvin. Now, Calvin, what do you think is going to happen? Sorry, what's that again? That's so true. Okay, now, Laura, you don't mind if I just raise your suggestion? Yeah. Is it going? Yeah. Because it is suggested. Guys, now listen, this is going to get very serious now. Look at this. Now, I have. The polynomial, I find the first factor and I find the quotient. Yes, Ash? Then it means that the polynomial which I have, x minus 
2x plus 12 is going to be equal to the product of these two terms, the quotient we shall times the divide. Yes. I think the first term was. Oh, yes. I think I have to change my glasses. Now, this one equals to this term divided times the quotient that we got. Remember, because the remainder is zero, then we do not have to include this. Then I get. And also, Kevin said something very interesting. We just moved one step ahead, which is very impressive. I have this one. Now, look at this. Because the remainder is zero, this polynomial which I got, it turns out to be the product of these two things. Guys, everyone look at the board, please. Liana, Michelle, Alexandra, Jackson, Angelic, Ash, uh, Medina, Lauren, and also Kelvin, Nick, Daniel, Priyash, and Russell. I learned everyone's names. That's good. Look at this one. It's very important from this part. Now, when you have this one, that's exactly that's the philosophy which I mentioned to you. That's up. From the huge piece, we move to two pieces that we are multiplying with each other. That's right. Now, I also want to tell you that I have also this term. And if you look at the first two points which I have given to you on the first page, we say that, Michelle, if the quotient, Medina, that I got here, it can be also itself be chopped into the pieces to make everything looks like a binomial. When I look at this one, I can think of this. Find two numbers. Yes, Jackson. Let me write this one as a very piece. I have x plus 2 multiplies into 4 and 3. That's right. Two numbers that they add sum becomes minus 7. Their multiplication becomes 12. And as Jackson said, it becomes minus 3 and minus 1. Then it becomes multiplied to x minus 3 x minus four. And now, guys, look at this, we're almost done. Now, the polynomial which I gave it to you, there. Now, it turns out to be the three small pieces. I gave you a birthday cake, you got a very sharp knife, you put that into small pieces. Now, now it's going to serve, Laura. Serve the cake. How? I say, okay, now, if someone comes to tell me this is your investment function at the RBC, what time you are going to get back from Ash? Then I say, okay, I take this one equal to zero. Let me wait this part. Now you are able to predict, for example, what time you are going to get back from, then you can just withdraw your money from the bank. Now, I just say what? I say P of X. Mm, I'm looking for the times which my money is becoming zero. They mean that my investment should go to zero. Now, before that, it was so hard to find this. Now that I have small pieces, now I can say that this one implies Medina that X plus 2 times X minus 3 times X minus 4 has to be zero. If that's the case, Jackson, now we are here to make our philosophy. If everything is goes to zero, then the unity of term piece by piece we shall should become zero. Which means that once x plus 2 equals to zero, implying that x is minus 2. Also, Alexandra, means the second term should go to zero, implying that x has to be plus 3. And at the end, Angela, it says that, it implies that x minus 4 should go to zero, 
Liana, in front of that X has to be four. Now, can you see that? Factorizing number is a very powerful technique. You can apply it also to solve polynomial equation. And that was the lesson of the day. Factorization method as a powerful technique to solve polynomial equation. Yes, Marina? I see a question. Yes. Can you use it That's right. You can just the chart that you can. You can use to point on the terms that the numerical value of the polynomial becomes zero, the multiplied in the game. But because you just wanted to know that the only computation you just the that one. Also you could use to use the next one. So that they can in the calculator, find other things, then multiply in the game. Good point. Very good point. Thank you. Oh, yes, 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 please. Thank you. Now, any question? No question? Now, the thing which I just want to finish my part for today is this. We then we focus for the next coming sessions on this technique, the method of factorizing a polynomial from degree 3 all the way to degree 5, 6, so on, to solve a polynomial equation, which our root then is this. You have a polynomial, you factorize it, then if it goes to zero, each individual has to go to zero. Does it make sense to everyone? Yes, Ash? Yeah. Everyone's fine? If everyone is fine, which I'm sure, then Rihanna, do you have any question to ask then? No, you don't have? But do you have any questions for me? You sure? No, I'm sure. Oh, you understand for me? Okay, now. Guys, people, we finished the day today. I want you just to go to page number 15. Do we have 35 minutes left? No, we have 18. 18. Or sorry, 12. <laughs> Alexander wait, can wait, 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 Alexander can't wait to finish the class. <laughs> no, we have 11 minutes, 30 seconds. You only have 11 minutes. Counting the seconds. Now, if you have no questions, then let me. Yes, please. We are going to focus dominantly on uh, what why it is important, guys, that you are 
learning how to solve everyone's attention to the next. Kelvin, Danielle, Franklin, Ash, Roscoe, and Andrew. Guys, what is important? One, before I just show you this example, I want to emphasize to you that, Michelle, why it is very important that you are learning to solve the polynomial. To solve the polynomial, that's what he said. He said, yeah, x equals to zero, as what we did over here. And now we are developing techniques in order to solve it. But why is it always important to just take the polynomial goes to zero? I said in the beginning now, we have many, many natural phenomena that Jackson can model them as a polynomial. Then it is important to solve them to find the zeros. You can find it from clients or in more advanced things, this is called the Chemistep polynomial. Chemistep polynomials becomes a very advanced type of polynomials. We are not going to have it in the high school, but we saw that, for example, you have to solve it in order to find the roots. That's why it is important. Now, if it is important, then we have to learn different techniques to find the roots. One of the techniques found that we learned, it was this method. Finding the factor dependent on the constant term, then finding the quotient, then the small pieces goes to two. The second technique, out of three, that we covered today, the third one for the next session, is this. Sometimes you see that the polynomial that you're trying to just break it into small pieces because our philosophy is that to have them all as a product that when you push them to zero, that each individual can become zero is not, let's say, for example, this method. For example, the factorization is not going to be relevant. Why? Because sometimes you see that the last term that you have Either it's not constant, or if this is a constant, the table that you you are going to have this example next session. You see that, for example, so some cases next week you have a constant term, but the constant term factors when you find the polynomial value at those points, they are not equal to zero at all. Then you say, oh my God, what should I do? Because the method we show each other, it tells me that find the factors, then Laura comes, take this polynomial, divide by that factor, find the quotient, then there we are. But what happens next? That we do not have any factors because the value of the factors, they do not take the numerical value of the polynomial to zero. Means there is no factor. Russell, I think I cannot see you very far. Can you see me? Yes. Are you sure? No. Otherwise, I have to take you there then, then to be able to see you there. I'm, I'm concerned that you can see the board. Now, then if there is no factor, for example, one case, then you just try the second one. For example, look at this one. This one, when you look at it, I said, wait a minute. We do not have any constant factors coming at the end like 24 to find this factor that find the numerical value. Then what do we have to do is that we say no problem. What we can do is that we try to make these factors groups by groups. I say look at this. I see, I can see a pattern that these two terms and the last two terms, I can just group them together. I say that x to the power of 4 minus 6x to the power of 3 plus 2x to the power of 2 minus 12x. If I do that, I see the little pattern like that. I see the 6 here. I see 12 in there. It means that they can be somehow related. But how? I say, okay, if from the first term, I factor the highest common term which they have. What is the highest common term between x to the power 4 and minus 
26 of the power to the That's right. Thanks, Ash. X to the 3 to the power 3 is the highest of the factors of the first group. Then in that sense, all the thing which is left is X minus 6. I continue. How about the second group? If I get a cluster them together, and I'm looking for something to build up that. Yes, yes. So this is just like uh, on the two of the numbers. So don't you want to get x squared out of the first one? And this is way worse. Just control it. And then we can do that. Yeah. We can do that. But if you have to prepare things to go, when it comes to which strategy, it becomes a very smart, I should say, play. You do the x squared, you do not see common terms. Then you go with the next one. I'm going to also with the x squared to see what happens. But that's also a possibility. Now, with this one, all the time which I have, because I know my game, I'm trying angularly to find something like this. Exactly like this. I, I'm looking to find something like that. I, I'm not sure if I can get it. Next, if I want this, what do I have to factor from this to just make this zero? That's right. Thanks, Nick. If I factor 2x from these two terms, we can see that. We can see that, oh, wait a minute. I have these two terms are equal. Then whenever you see that equation, which is equal, what do you do? You done? You factor them by itself. I say this one, x minus 6, it becomes a factor in it. Then from the first term, you are left with x to the power 3 plus 2x. Now, look at this. Now, and now everything seems very happy for me because my strategy for the original method to transform them into a factor for that idea, and now pattern by pseudo factorization and grouping them, clustering them together. And if that's the case, I can solve it. I can solve this one as easy as possible. Then I say that p of x equals to x to the power of 4 minus 6x to the power of 3 plus 2x minus 12x. Then it turns out to be x to the power of 3 plus 2x times x minus 6. So far, I just got all the things from the curve here, then you say p of x equal to zero. Because that's our plan. Solve a polynomial angularly. And in that sense, I do not think this one goes to zero because it's so hard to solve it. But if I take its equivalent, which is x to the power 3 plus 2x times x minus 6 goes to zero, I see eight of many then one. Now this one is easy because each individual term should go to zero. It means that once x to the power 3 plus 2x should go to zero. And also once x minus 6 should go to zero. And that's what we are looking for by solving the polynomial. Put them and them into small pieces. Then take each small piece to go to zero. From the last one, oh my god, life can't be easier. When you have found something like that, you say, you close your eyes, you just write six, you're done. What did I mean to tell Now, look at this one. This one seems a little bit too that too rich. In order to solve this, you tell Medina, put first of all, you say, I'm going to factor x x squared plus 2 goes to 0. And now, 
again, we go back to the same strategy. We have something big, we anchor them into small pieces. Then we say that each small piece by itself goes to zero. Then as a result, means either x is going to be zero, or the second small piece, x squared plus two, is going to be zero. Oh, that's, that's the thing. Oh my god. I don't know if any of you see that in the URI there. Thank you for observing it. And guys, look at this. Look at this. We have x squared plus c equal to zero. Then we have other roots there. We have no idea about this. One root there, one zero root here. How much time do we have? Five minutes. Now, look at this. Caitlin, can you see from there again? Yes. Now, look at this. Now, I continue further. Look how, look, look how it works. We started from this. We went to there. Then from here, we went to there. From here, we continue to this one. From here, we continue to this one. You see, step by step. And all that we do, we follow the same philosophy. The polynomial is broken into small pieces. For this one, we said that x squared plus 2 equals to 0 means x squared is equal to minus 2. And that's absurd, though. Why? Why do you think it is absurd? Oh, I forgot to give you one minute break for a while. You should have reminded me. Next time, please remind me that we need a one minute break. Now, look at this one. Something to the power 2 is negative. What does it mean? Any idea? No one? Is it possible? Yes. I mean, it's like 1 over x squared. Mm -hmm. Actually, wait, no way. No, it's, if you mean that, it's going to be 1 over x to the power of minus 2. Still, minus, it doesn't. Yeah. Still, it's a good idea. It's a good attempt, but doesn't do much. Here, I'm going to finish with this. In the test, if you got there, leave it there. But if you are following, I should say, uh, the macronial textbook, at the very end of the chapter, for some challenging problems, they have something like that. And they solve it. From here, it is optional if you want to listen. Otherwise, you can just uh, uh, Shut your ear. If you want, I don't, I don't, I don't take it personally. If you want to shut your ear, I, I just continue. From here, oh, you're shutting your eyes. <laughs> you don't want to see this. This at the end of the Magnus Hill textbook, it says that if with the power exponent, which is even, you got something minus, this is a new field of the math. This is called complex analysis. You have it at the university, which it means that introduce a notation I square root of minus 1, then for this, it means that x squared is equal to plus or minus i square root of 2. Sorry, x. You do not need to learn it. I hope that you just shut your eyes or shut your ear. Until here, you are fine. If you want a challenge from that new textbook, you are in the new world of the complex analysis. Okay. Uh, 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 so oh my god. Guys, for the homework, please only do these three exercises at the end of page four. I'm gonna add more to Google Classroom, but this is for us. So Oh, yay! Good luck, you know! Oh, my goodness! Oh, I can't